Society might have led you to the assumption that Christians are boring, judgy, lame. I don't know what you think about Christians right now, but this is the reality of Christian teens. Before we get started, I want you to know that I respect you and whatever you do or don't believe, this is just my truth and my reality. I would love to share that with you if you want to listen. True Christians actually read their Bibles. It's basically the sword to our fight every day, okay? Okay, I was listening to a podcast called The Porch. So the podcast said that if you are looking at the Bible as a rule book, that mindset is a very selfish mindset. The Bible isn't about you, it's not about me, it's for for us, it's how much Jesus loves us. There's so much that we can learn from Jesus. If someone says they're a Christian and they don't read their Bible, something doesn't add up here because if we wanna be faithful to God, his plan and his instructions, then we need to know what his instructions are and his promises and what to look for, what to sin, what's not. In reality, this whole book is here for us. It's a love letter from God to us and an instruction manual that tells us how to live our life to the fullest. To the assumption that Christians are lame, I'd give you Proverbs chapter 7, verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teaching as the apple of your eye. God's not saying, keep my commandments and stay in your house all day and just be annoyed and be lame. No, he wants us to go live with the commandments in mind. It's insane to me. I recently had to get off of social media. I was just finding myself getting so thrown into all of the conversations that have been happening in our world. And it just seemed like everyone had a voice. It was just starting to drive me crazy. I said, you know what, yo, I gotta take a step back. What it reminded me of is that there's a lot of voices speaking into our lives. Which ones are we going to listen to? And so for me, the reason why Bible reading is so important is because I want the number one voice speaking into my life to be the one of the creator God, God of the universe. I would just caution you, what are the voices that you're listening to and what are you anchored to right now? What's your faith in? Mine is in my God, mine is in his word. And so that's why I find it's so important to be anchored and tied in to the word of God now more than ever with all the voices, all the things going on in our world. I think every single Christian struggles to read their Bible. At the beginning, I was so confused. Something I've learned from my youth pastor is read it so that you can know Jesus more. There's so many different ways to read the Bible, which I didn't know when I started being a Christian. Chapter a day, a verse a day, a chapter a week. The possibilities are endless and it's however much you can take per day. It's all so personal. It's just between you and God and it's such a beautiful thing to do. Without his word, we're walking in darkness. Isn't that crazy? And then Romans 15 verse four, whatever it was written in former days was written for our instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of scripture, we might have hope. Getting the good news out. It's just so selfish of me to have so much peace and love and joy in my heart because of Jesus Christ. It's just very selfish of me not to share the good news. This is something that I don't know if it's controversial or not, but I think a lot of the times we don't do a good job of sharing God's word. Sometimes I feel like people can be pushy with it. We literally get no commission off of your conversion. So I was in New York one time where these people holding up signs and they were like, Jesus. Like they were angry and they kept chanting in Times Square. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're sending the wrong message here. What are you doing? I don't know. Maybe God wanted them to do that. I went with my dad and he's not a Christian and he's like, see what they're trying to do? Like that's not right. Like obviously like freedom of speech and that's beautiful and we'd love to execute that and practice are freedom but I think sometimes Christians can come off as pushy like, you know the billboard signs that say anxious you need Jesus like do you really think people are going to like call that number I don't know I feel like we could all do a better job of sharing the gospel because sometimes the way we do it I feel like unattracts people I don't know maybe they don't maybe I'm wrong maybe God's put it on someone's heart I'm not anyone to judge in my mind it's a little bit like hmm <laughs> when I'm reading the Bible I feel like God wants me to share this I'll post something on my Instagram story. Okay, I know that God has used that so much because there's been multiple people that have reached out to me and also like using YouTube as a platform and just reaching out to me and saying like, oh hey, you seem like such a strong Christian and that's so cool. How do I get closer to God? The fact that a post can like spark something in someone's mind to be like, oh my gosh, that like seems cool. I wanna read the Bible. One of the best ways to share the gospel is by being an example. What I try to do is carry myself in a certain way, obviously like glorifying God. My hope is that people will see me and be like, oh, Naima's got something different. What is that? And then they'll come talk to me and I'll be like, oh, well, you know, 
I got Jesus. And then we can have a whole conversation. I think that's like number one way to share your faith. Matthew 10, 19. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. I have to remind myself a lot of the times that it's not about me. If God wants me to do something, I'm his vessel. I am going to go do it. I don't have to worry because his words will come through me. As long as I'm in prayer and, and, and in my Bible. I think another reason why Christians may be perceived as pushy is because they just want to see you in heaven. To me, it's kind of a scary thought knowing... So many people that aren't Christian, I just want to like give them a hug. Someone coming to Jesus is not in your power. Like you really just have to pray for that person. And over time, like God will work in their life and it's his timing, not yours. And I've had to remind myself of that several times. Another big part of being a Christian is being faithful and willing to listen. Proverbs 2 verses 1 through 5 says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Being faithful means getting up and reading your Bible even when you don't feel like it because there is power in obedience and faithfulness. Okay, being a Christian, it's really having Jesus in your heart and trusting in him and wanting to fulfill his purpose for your life and just wanting to be a vessel a huge part of that is like wanting to listen a lot of the times we want to listen to our own selfish desires it's really important as a christian to be faithful listen to jesus and like okay what college do you want me to go to where, where should i stand on this and just pray 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 whatever i have to go through it doesn't matter whatever pain i'm feeling i don't care as long as god gets the glory from my feelings and as long as i can transform what i'm feeling or a bad situation for him and to glorify him. I just want God to get the glory for my life, honestly. Another part of being faithful is listening to when God convicts you of something. So I'm gonna be really honest here. I probably shouldn't be sharing this. I don't know. I really wanted to get into the party scene. I was really interested in trying things and then I went on TikTok. I'm partly on Christian TikTok. You know, just scrolling through my TikTok feed, I was seeing almost all the TikToks about how we don't need to fill ourselves with worldly things because we have so much hope and satisfaction in our heart because of the fact that Jesus Christ has died for us, but that he has risen and that he is here. And then reading my Bible, you know, going through Proverbs or something, one of the verses like, don't be led by a substance. And I was like, God? are you trying to tell me something right now and then i was like no 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 this isn't it this is just a coincidence whatever i think it's so easy for us to be mad at god and say god no it's fine like i can still go to parties and do all this stuff and i'll i'll still love you but if god convicts you of something all i'm trying to say here is that if a kid was running into the middle of a busy road one of the parents would go out pull him back he would be like no what are you doing we don't cross the street when there's cars any loving parent would stop the child and discipline them so that they learn not to do it again in the same way god is so loving he doesn't want you to go down that path he's gonna send you signs and when those signs come please don't get mad pray that god will just reveal what is not of him in your heart so that you can remove it ultimately the goal is to be more like jesus the goal is to be like jesus but obviously we're not perfect and that's why it's so important to pray and to listen and to be faithful for me i listen to christian music all the time it's really transformed my life because what you put into your heart it will desire thanks again james your heart wants what you feed it you're listening to sexual music all the time guess what your heart's gonna want you guessed it <laughs> what comes in goes out so if you fill in your heart with worldly things by you know by the music that you listen to by the things that you watch and and what is around you um, then that's what is going to come out of your mouth. If you spend uh, time with people that are swearing all the time, then you're going to start to use the same words to say the same thing. So important to guard your heart above all else because everything flows from your heart. It's so amazing to have a place to share your God moments and you need a sturdy community so you can be encouraged. At least like in my school, I don't know that many Christians. It's so nice on Wednesdays like to go to a youth group where everyone 
has the same phase and has the same end goal. You're all on a certain vibe and it's so nice. So iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. Your Christian friends can be there for you to sharpen your faith and encourage you. I'm just so incredibly thankful for my youth group and my Christian friends that I had throughout high school that really encouraged me and helped me when I was going through hard times. Something amazing just happened that I must share with you. I must. Two o'clock, you know, editing my video to try to upload it tomorrow. I have the Bible app. I do have my notifications turned on so that I get a verse a day. I'm editing the section right now about community and the importance of fellowship. Guess what verse pops up right when I'm editing about it? If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Coincidences are not a thing. Miracles and coincidences don't happen just like that. The earth isn't just the perfect amount of space away from the sun just because it's a coincidence. I can go on. Wake up, people, wake up. Life is not a coincidence. This world didn't just come into place by chance. Um, also, youth group is so fun. Like, if you ever wanna come with me and you live near me, I'll bring you. If you want me to be your community, let's do it. Patience and love, you need a lot of that. It doesn't come from you. It comes from God, whom which, whom, whom which I can do all things through him that strengthens me. I cannot love everyone in my own strength. No, no, no. I think that it's too often stated that Christianity is a religion in which you are just trying to do the right thing, where it is a set of rules that you're trying to abide by in the hopes that you make it to heaven. That's just completely contrary to what the Bible has to say about what being a Christian is. Being a Christian is knowing and loving God, understanding that Jesus died on the cross for me, and that there is nothing else that I can do as a person to achieve my own salvation. Christ has done everything for me that can be done. When you take that into account and you live a lifestyle in which um, that is showed out by the Bible. So the, these rules that people see in the Bible or like, you should do this, you do this, call your brother to do this. What that's saying is that to further please God, the God that has had so much grace on you that he sent his son to die for you and that in an act of pure love, he decided that you, no matter where you are, are worth his time. A God like that is telling you to do something. You're in a time of chaos like we are right now. It is so good to know that a God of that much love is calling us to learn how to love like him, is calling us to be more patient, is calling us to care for our neighbors, that no matter what's going on, no matter what turmoil, God will be there for us and with us. When you think about friendship or relationships with people, the people that make sacrifices for you are the people that are going to stick around the longest. The people that want to put the time in and that have put the time in, whether you wanted them to or not, and what they did was further you as a person, those are the people that are going to build a relationship that is strong. And that's what God has done for us. And as a Christian, that's what I believe. Not just patience with the day-to-day -day things, with like relationships and like dating, because again, it's his timing, not mine. If all of my friends are dating, I'm just here with God, I'll be okay with it. If you're not in a relationship right now, I think it's because God is still grooming you to be that perfect wife, husband, that perfect human. Not perfect, nobody's perfect, but you know what I mean. God is grooming you right now, right now, and preparing you for the mother or the father or the worker or whatever you're gonna be. Being single is so underrated. Our society needs to work on not sexualizing everything and being content in singleness because it's such a beautiful time for self-discovery. Also, it's such a good time to learn about Jesus and to grow with him so good. If you're not ready, God's not gonna give it to you. Isn't that so nice of him? It's like if you have a presentation to present and the teacher knows you're not ready, but makes you go up anyways. God's not like that, my friend. Oh my gosh, I have so much respect for pastors right now. You don't, I mean, I always do, but I can't find the book Philippians, but Philippians 419 also correlates to patience. I'm gonna be real with you here because this is the reality. <laughs>
Another part of being Christian is doubt and unmotivation. But that devil, if he sees you reading that Bible, ooh, he's gonna be mad. Especially like with questions and stuff, when I am faced with doubt or I just read something that seems completely off to me in the Bible, I text youth pastor James and I just text him. If it's 1 a.m., I text them. When I grew up in a Christian family, I didn't really get that outside influence of the world because I was so sheltered. I got to high school, made it known in my school I'm Christian, and you know, I told them I'm not perfect. A lot of questions um, thrown at me like, how do bad things happen to good people? If there's a God, how does his judgment work? What if good people are not Christian? It just kind of interrupted my whole routine when it came to faith. Like, I wouldn't pray as much anymore. I wouldn't read the Bible as much because I'm like, if this is God I'm worshiping, I do not want to worship at all. And I realized reading the Bible and I'm praying to him to get to know him and through that I got to know that the God I'm worshiping is a compassionate loving caring father to the fatherless yes his judgment might be harsh but man he loves us beyond he loves us more than our parents could ever love us and that love is unconditional without my doubt it wouldn't have made me realize the reason why I was actually praying and reading the Bible in the first place. I just really encourage you to not let your confusion or lack of understanding or lack of effort get in the way of a relationship with the God. Also, there's so many good websites and podcasts you can look for, but also I think something that has been really getting to me recently is the fact that I'm not going to know everything and I don't need to know everything because God is so much more powerful. I feel his presence, I know he's real. I'm not going to let me needing to know every single question about the universe and like getting really in depth about evolution or whatever. I'm not going to let that affect me because I know the answers will come along the way and everything will just like melt into place. It's normal to have questions. It's good to have questions. We need to have questions in order to grow and in order to really fully understand, comprehend, and appreciate what this all is. I don't know, I feel like some people just will never stop asking questions just so that they can have the peace of mind saying, oh, God's not real, no, whatever. When you have a question, fight to get the answer to it. I definitely, at times, I felt discouraged when I was searching for answers and searching for the truth, and I would really encourage you to listen to the podcast i have links in the description listen to god's word because that is the whole base of this whole thing oh my gosh my battery's dying guys okay <laughs> proverbs 3 verses 5 through 8 check it out also letting god shine through you in every single aspect of your life very important how you carry yourself so many things like if you swear and you say you're a christian Mm. Also, not abusing God's grace. We can't do that. That's so mean of us. If you sin knowing that it's a sin and it's wrong, that's a whole different level of sin, let me just tell you. We serve such a powerful God, but he's also so loving and merciful. So sometimes it's hard to not abuse God's grace because you know that he will give you grace and so you feel like you can just keep living for yourself all the time and then God will just keep forgiving you every time. But that's not really like what it's about being a Christian because when you make a decision to follow Jesus Christ, it's not just like, oh yeah, like I'm following God, but I'm also following my own life. No, like you're giving your life over to Jesus Christ and you're not living for yourself anymore. So obviously we'll still make mistakes and we'll still like sin because we're human, but it becomes a thing where like you're living for God's purpose over your life. You no longer are living for yourself. Philippians 2 says, verse 3 says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. I feel like that's really what it's about. Like you have to be humble. And for me, it's kind of like a daily thing. Like every single morning I have to surrender myself to God. And obviously, praise and praying is a beautiful part of being Christian. For me, it's been really hard to pray, so I journal my prayers so that I can like uh, stay focused. Live with peace no matter what. No matter if the world is falling apart, you're like, oh my God's got it, I'm going to heaven. Let's go. Also, I'm not afraid to die. Does that mean I'm gonna go in front of a bus and be stupid? No, but I have complete faith in my God and his plan for the world, his plan for me, and it doesn't mean I'm gonna do nothing all day, but I will list a few of my favorite Christian accessory books and stuff like that in the description. Definitely reach out to me if you have any questions, if you just wanna chat, whatever it is. 